Okay, hello. And uh, I'm going to be making a uh, VHF quarter wave ground plane antenna. Now, that sounds like a lot of fancy words. And it is. Essentially, all it is is an antenna piece uh, coming off a base. In this case, I'm using uh, one of these connectors. And it's going to have a couple of radials, which are just other bits of wire that come off um, sort of at, a, at an angle to the main one. And they sort of act like, uh, you know, well, I'm not going to get into what they act like because it's that's complicated stuff. Um, well, it's not, but it's... I'd say the scope of this video will do another thing specifically on this antenna at a later point. Um, I'm doing something a bit different and I don't know whether it's going to work. I'll tell you, I, it'll work. I just don't know how well or what the drawbacks will be. So there's a thing in amateur radio called SWR, which stands for standing wave ratio. And essentially it's uh, how efficient the antenna is, sort of. It's, it's Basically, if you have too high of an SWR, the antenna is not going to work and it can also cause interference with other things, which is the key point. You don't want this to be interfering with um, your next door neighbor's TV or some such because you'll get into a lot of trouble for that. So what I'm doing differently is I'm actually using um, a coat hanger, a bit of metal from a coat hanger. So I'm assuming it's aluminium and that's perfectly fine. You can use aluminium as, as an antenna. That's not a problem. The problem comes in, or potentially the problem comes in, um, I don't have enough of this material to make everything. I just have enough on hand to do the uh, the quarter wave. And I thought to myself, I wonder, is there any issues if you mix metals? So here I have a couple of copper wire, or a couple of bits of copper wire. And these are going to be my radials. Um, I don't know whether there is an issue. I would assume that there, there possibly might be, because the resistances and impedances of the wire the resistance is different between them at the very least so that may cause an issue it may not um we'll see the way that these are connected essentially you will have your antenna element there so it'll be connected to that that middle part there and then in here you'll see that there is an insulator in this case it's a plastic -y material and then the radials will be connected to this outer plate so they won't actually be touching each other directly. So the the uh, the RF, the, the radio frequency, the power, will have to go through this anyway. So I don't know whether the resistance will actually matter. So, but because I am not sure, I am not going to transmit using this um, because I do not have an SWR meter, which is um, a little device you plug in line with the antenna, and it will check it and see what the SWR is and it's a good thing to have I just haven't got one handy um, I will be getting one in the future to test it but I do want to see whether this can receive very well and later I'll be testing it with transmit once I have once I'm able to actually check the SWR um, if anyone knows about mixing metals with the uh, radials and the antenna let me know um, yeah apart from efficiency I, th I think it'll be okay um, because there are, um, now this is, I'm talking low frequency, so there is differences, but I have seen radials which are copper and the antenna is um, very thick aluminium, but that's low frequency. That's a, that's a different ball game, so it might be different, I don't know. So, if you want, you can make this entirely out of copper, and I would recommend that if you're going to use it in any way, shape or form. Um, if you make it entirely out of copper and you do your measurements correctly, uh, you, you probably won't need an SWR reading. You, you'll be, as long as you've uh, done your calculations and you've measured them out, you'll be fine. Now, I was talking about calculations. This is for VHF for the 2 meter band. Because I want it for the 2 meter band, I've made this 50 centimeters, which is a quarter wavelength. Now, if you're looking to do a specific frequency, the easiest way to get it in... Uh, I believe centimeters. I will annotate that if that's wrong. If it's in meters, tell a lie. It's in meters. Uh, yeah, that's going to annoy me. Let me check that verb. Yes. Okay. So there you go. That's it. Um, 
So the easiest way to get it is to divide 300 by the frequency that you want to use, and that will give you the uh, that will give you the length that you need for a full wavelength. Now that. Uh, the reason that you use uh, 300 um, is because 300 is the speed of light. Now it's not all the be going out there, it's actually, uh, if I remember correctly, 3 times 10 to the 8th power, I think. Um, again, citation needed. But if you keep 300 in your head as a number, if you divide 300 by your frequency, that will give you the length that you need. And then you can divide that up for whatever wavelength um, you need. In this case, a quarter wavelength for 2 meter band, it's 50 centimeters. Your radials need to be slightly longer than uh, the antenna. Now, you might be looking at those going there about the same size. You'd be right, but I made this slightly longer because part of it actually slots in into the shielding. Um, now, you can make them the same size. It's just slightly more efficient if they are a bit longer. There is a calculation for it. Um, I can't remember off the hand, but if you Google it, and um, you'd be able to find it. Now, if you're wanting to make an antenna out of copper, and you might be thinking, where the hell am I gonna get copper from? If you know what feeder is, feeder is your uh, coaxial cable that you would plug this into and it goes into the back of the, the radio. Um, standard coaxial cable, it's um, the same stuff that's used, well, slightly different, but same design as the stuff that you would use uh, into the back of your TV for the, uh, the aerial. Now, what you can do, and what I have been doing is if you take a bit of that material, so this is a bit of coax that I've cut to the right size, and you can take, strip it down and take the copper out of it. And if you do that five times, then you'll have enough for your antenna, excuse me, and your radials. And I'll just show you how I've done that now. Most dangerous tool in the shop. It's ridiculous. The amount of times that I've cut myself and sliced myself with these, be very careful with them. I'm sure you've heard it before, cut away from your body, all the rest. You will see me do some stupid things with this knife and very dangerous things. And I promise I will tell you if I get injured and I will happily show you because please do not do as I do in some circumstances because it can be dangerous. But all you wanna do is you wanna cut through the shielding, just roughly in the middle is the, is the way I've been doing it. And you can lean fairly hard because you're not trying to strip the cabling or strip the outer shielding only you need to cut all of this away so whenever you're actually putting a, uh, a plug on the end of it or a connector on the end of your coax you, you tend to be quite careful cutting through the shielding in case you damage the copper braid on the inside but we're not using the copper braiding so you can lean fairly heavy and slice through as long as you're not cutting straight through the copper Now, if you got that perfect, which I doubt anyone would, it'll come straight off. But otherwise, what you'll see is something like that, where you've got wee bits that you missed. If you give it a wee pull, you'll see them, and then you can just cut through them. There you go, and it'll just pull off. Like so. And I would also recommend keeping these handy. Um, it's cable shielding if you do any sorts of electronics, any any sort of electronic projects. Um, you can use that a bit like uh, heat shrink um, just to cover and protect tubes. Um, or not tubes, wrong, that is a tube. Uh, protect, protect cables. Um, it's also plastic. I don't know whether this would shrink in heat like heat shrink would, but um, yeah, you could try it. But I usually hold on to them. With the uh, braiding, so this is the copper braiding that you can see on the outside there. Uh, what you do is just, if you pull it back slightly, get a grip of the, what looks like foil. And again, you can just pull the braiding off. And again, I, I keep a hold of this stuff. I've not found a use for it yet, but I'm sure I will. Um, it's actually very similar to, um, if you've ever seen uh, the wicking uh, material for soldering that wicks the solder away it's it actually looks very similar to that so if for no other purpose you could probably use it as a, as a wick for solder 
Uh, this material just unfolds. And I just chuck that stuff in the bin. Now this bit is awkward and potentially dangerous. What I've been doing is if you get a good grip of it at the end, hold the blade down and sort of pin it between the table and pull it towards you. There you go. And you can cut it back like that. This this material that's around this is like uh, styrofoam. It's surprisingly tough. Um, I was very. <laughs> I thought this would have been the easiest part of stripping these down, but it is surprisingly tough. Um, whenever you get to the end, usually the end doesn't quite come off. So just give it a bit of motivation. And eventually, and of course this one's awkward, there we go. Eventually whenever you get it, it will uh, it will peel off like that and you can then strip it away. And if you're very lucky, sometimes, no, nope, it's not going to do it for me. Uh, sometimes that bit there that you were holding, sometimes it can just uh, slide right off. But uh, of course this time it doesn't, so it's not. Um, also, safety tip with a uh, Stanley knife, or Stanley blade, whatever you want to call it. Uh, whenever you're cutting something like that, hold the blade still and pull the material through it. Don't don't put force on the knife, because if uh, the knife slips, you can go away, or it can run away from you. And that's how you end up stabbing either yourself, someone else, or in some cases I've cut through wires by doing that, that I haven't meant to. Uh, once that's done, you then have a nice bit of copper cable, well, wire. And just try and straighten it out as best you can. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight. Obviously, the straighter you can get it, the better. But if you've ever tried to untangle a coat hanger, you'll know how difficult this can be. Um, there are plenty of videos on there that show, uh, they call them hacks. I, uh, yeah. I don't know why they call them a hack, but everything's a bloody hack these days. They call them hacks for straightening out wire. I have not watched any of them, but um, oh, if you know of any tips, let me know. Oh, that's still quite bent. So, that's that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my soldering iron out. And I'm going to solder the main element into there. And then I'm going to solder the radials. Sort of a, a bit like a 45 degree angle um, from from the main element. And I'm just going to use these wee loops to uh, to solder them to. Okay, future grant here. Um, while I was making this uh, antenna, uh, I had a few brain fart moments. You'll see them coming up as well as some appalling soldering. I'll spare you looking at most of it. Um, um, also, I measured the um, resistance of the antenna and the uh, the copper radials uh, just to see what the differences between the metals were. But um, I realised this might be a bit confusing. The resistance of the antenna doesn't matter massively. Uh, it, it does a bit, but the, uh, the the way that the the RF actually travels through an antenna whenever it's radiating, not through not through the copper wire itself whenever it's going to the to the um to the antenna, but whenever it's actually at the antenna itself, it um it doesn't travel the same way that electricity would, so the resistance isn't as um it isn't as vital. I was just using that as a as a way to see what the different properties were of the of the metals. Um, I have also um now since found out that there can be an issue when mixing the metals, not necessarily with transmit, it'll still transmit okay, but more with uh, corrosion, galvanic corrosion. So whenever copper and aluminium, oh that's, that's dirty. Um, whenever copper and aluminium are together for any length of time, it will start to corrode um, at a slightly more accelerated rate. 
the fact that I'm mixing the uh, the antenna element that's here and the radials coming off the side that isn't actually an issue what is an issue is this base plate itself because I am pretty sure this is probably aluminium and the copper is in direct contact with it so you will then have these parts here starting to corrode and that's just something that would happen there I'm going to have uh, potentially a couple more videos experimenting just seeing what can be done to seal this and isolate it from the copper without actually um, breaking the electrical connections. There's, I have a couple of ideas, so I will try them and see and see which um, solution might be best depending on your on your circumstances. Because anything that's out permanently outside is going to have corrosion as an issue anyway. Um, I live beside the sea, so just everything rusts here. So it's always an issue. Now the antennas that I have, I have them up and whenever I finish with them, I take them down again. For that very purpose, it, it everything rusts. Uh, so I thought I would uh, clear that up with the, uh, the corrosion. And uh, yeah, I'll let, you, uh, I'll let you get back to seeing my horrific soldering. Okay, so what I'm gonna do First and foremost is well tin tin my iron. I know what a lot of you are thinking I should be doing this with an extractor fan, and you would be one hundred percent correct. I should be. So what I'm gonna do is this uh center pin, I'm just gonna give it a bit of solder in there. And then take the pin, sorry not the pin, the antenna. Now this is the reason why not to buy cheap soldering iron. This one is just a plug and play, I cannot control the heat so it's uh, the heat you've got is the heat you're, uh, heat you're stuck with. There we go. And yes, I would highly recommend getting an extractor of some shape or form if you're uh, doing stuff like this. Um, I should get one. Because the amount of fumes I inhale, I am probably going to die very young. So watch the videos while you can. Right. So now I'm just going to do the radials. For the radials, I sort of uh, curved the, uh, the copper at the ends just to allow them to hook on a bit easier. Now another thing you can do to make life a bit easier for yourself is tin um, where you're going to solder and I'll show you that on these two. Um, I don't always bother with it um, but I probably should um, and I'll show you on these two and I'll see just how much easier it is. Okay, I'm going to let the solder arm recover for a bit because that was getting quite cold near the end there so I'm going to pause this for a second. Just let that solder and iron get back up to temperature. Okay, so that should be a bit better. And I'll show you here, I'm gonna tin these areas here. Um, and all you're doing is essentially you're just putting down a, uh, a layer of solder, just to, just to help the other solder stick to it. Now you see the way that's beading on the iron, that's because it's not transferring enough heat. So there we go. There we go, that's one. And hindsight is 2020 and I really should have done the vertical last. Because now it's getting in my way. So because uh, the reason I had to let that heat up again, again, it's a very cheap iron. If you can, if you can afford it, I would highly suggest going for a soldering station, which uh, would 
do the job a lot better because you're able to control the temperature and more importantly it'll also get up to temperature very easily. So Okay, that is also a bit of a dry, we uh, dry weld, dry solder, but uh, we'll live with it for now. There we go. Um, what is a very good investment is actually a gas soldering iron. Um, they run off uh, butane. Butane. I can't remember, they run off a gas anyway, and they are very handy for um, repairs out in the field. Let's Clamp was moving on me. Um, but they're also good. Um, I, I think there is some um, cautions when it says to using them indoors. Uh, because it is gas, and obviously it gives off some fumes, but... If you're like me, and throw caution to the wind and, and heal bloody everything, which you really shouldn't, um, you'd probably be fine. Um, I've used I've used the gas ones before, and I thought they were great. Having said that, whenever you come back to something like this, anything seems great. Uh, let's just. Ah, here is a teachable moment. Don't put hot things on plastic. Well, at least not easily burnable plastic. Whoops. Bum, 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 bum. So that's why it was moving on me. Let's, let's try that again. It's a cheap vice, it's fine. And in the commotion, that has came off. So, now that you've seen me absolutely butcher that soldering, I'm going to attempt to tidy this up and attach the other two. Now we'll be back in a second. Okay, and that is it. Um, didn't really tidy them up that much, but illustrates a point, just shows you that uh, you don't actually have to be good at soldering to, uh, to make an antenna. Now, if you want to avoid soldering altogether, and if you solder like I do, I would recommend it. What you could do, um, especially have these kinds of connectors, if you have, have this kind, if you get a bolt, and if you run it through and just have a nut and a washer on the other end, you can hook the copper through it and just screw the washer down. And you're good to go. Something like that as well is handy for uh, portable antennas. So if you were wanting to, say, take something like this out into the field with you, that would be a way to do it because then you could collapse it down and have it in a more compact carry case, as it were, rather than having it all splayed like this. Um, now you can take this with you as well if you wanted. What you can do is just bend the radials upwards, but uh, copper doesn't like being bent too many times. If you do that, eventually they're gonna break. But to be fair, how easily you can get the, the wire and you can always reuse the, the copper even once it breaks. So um, there, there are pros and cons. So what I'm going to do, I need to um, make some connections. Uh, these guys here, I'll bring them in. Uh, I need to attach some of these. These are your standard uh, PL. PL doesn't say on them. Two hundred. And so I, the name is evading me. I will. I'll 
I'll, I'll put it in the description or something. PL connectors. Um, banana plugs is what is what I know them as. Um, they're a fairly standard radio connection. So I'm going to attach these to some coax Oop. and stick this on the side of the garage and see if I can get some uh, some decent reception. So that's it. That's uh, that's how you make a uh, three quarter wave ground plane antenna. It's fairly simple. Um, I have a few uh, videos showing it capturing some um, SSTV images from the International Space Station, which happened weekend past for me. Um, so I have that together. I've got the audio recorded of the SSTV signal. So I'll put a wee video together of decoding it um, just to show you. I mean, it's only, I had it up, yeah, it was maybe only like 10 feet or so off the ground. It was not that tall. I've just got it mounted on the side of the garage. So even with a relatively low height, it's still a very good antenna and it's uh, a very good one to start off with. So I'll have those videos coming out soon and uh, I'll see you later.